So, uh, we have already talked about the steps required to uh, perform uh, the modeling of uh, metabolism based on uh, metabolic networks. So, we said that we should construct a reaction list first, and if you want to do a genome scale modeling, we should link those reactions with the genes that control their enzymes, uh, the, the enzymes that catalyze those reactions. We should add a biomass reaction to this reaction list, and we should also consider growth associated and non growth associated ATP requirements. So this is what we covered last week. Let's go on with the other steps. So here we talk about mass balance based metabolic modeling. And now we will see how we do it. We can group mass balance based metabolic modeling techniques into two major groups. One is kinetic parameter dependent. And the other one is reaction stoichiometry dependent. This will be the focus in our course, but I will give a generic introduction to the other one uh, too. So in the kinetic parameter dependent version, we do dynamic modeling, which means time dependent modeling, which means that we can predict concentration profiles over a given time, uh, how the concentration of metabolites change. We can also predict rates over time. So kinetic parameter dependent modeling uh, provides us with two uh, different predictions, predicting how the concentration of metabolites change, predicting how the rates of the uh, reactions change over time. In the reaction stoichiometry dependent version, we are talking about mostly a steady state modeling, so there is no time involved. So we cannot predict concentration profiles here, rather the focus is predicting rates, reaction rates at steady state. And the most common approach used for this is called flux balance analysis. There is also a metabolic flux analysis, a different version of it. So I will talk about those. Uh, flux balance analysis will be the backbone of our computational uh, analysis within this course. I will talk about this, these two approaches and mass balance based metabolic modeling based on this very simple toy cell with a, a couple of metabolic reactions. So in this hypothetical cell, metabolite A is taken up from the outside environment then it is converted to metabolite B in an enzymatic reaction, which is converted to C or D in other enzymatic reactions. And C is secreted outside, and D is secreted outside of the cell membrane. It is, they are secreted outside. So in this system, we have six rates rate of the consumption of A, rate of the secretion of C, rate of secretion of D, and rate of conversion of A to B, rate of conversion of B to C, rate of conversion of B to D. If you want to write those reactions, this is how we write them. This is obvious, right? The reactions within the cell. So these also are referred as internal reactions. They are within our system boundary. 
So this is our system boundary and some metabolites are taken up or secreted out through the system boundary. We also have external reactions. External reactions are the reactions that define uptake or secretion of metabolites. So metabolite A is taken up from outside. This is an external reaction. And this is how we write it as a reaction. So here the key point is in the reaction representation, we only write internal version of metabolites. So A is already outside also, but we don't write it here as you see. So there is A outside. So normally it is like that. There is A in the external environment, which is taken up by the cell, right? Maybe this would be a better, more clear representation of this uptake reaction. But in the metabolic modeling approach, we only consider metabolites within the system boundary. So this A external is not within the system boundary. So we don't write it in our reaction list. So this is how we write uptake of A as a reaction. So there is nothing here and there is A inside, which means that something from outside, so A is outside and it is taken up by the cell. The same with other external reactions. So C is, C is inside, outside, so it becomes C external, but since this external C is outside our system boundary. We don't write it in the reaction. So for the external reactions, you will write them in this representation as half reactions in a way. So there will be a metabolite in one side, but the other side will be empty. So this means C is or D is inside and since this is empty, this means it goes to outside environment. It leaves the system boundary. So the common procedures for metabolic modeling is first, you should determine the system boundary because based on this system boundary, you will write the uh, exchange of reactions, the uptake and secretion reactions. And the next step is to write a differential mass balance around each metabolite. What does it mean to say that around each metabolite? This is around Within system boundary. So if you look at here within the system boundary, I have A, B, C, and D. So I will write a mass balance, a differential mass balance for these four metabolites. Why do we write a differential mass balance? Differential mass balance around A, for example, will actually define how the level of A change over time. How its amount, its concentration change over time. Let's write it. So how will the amount of A change over time? It is the function of two reactions, right? One of them takes A from outside the environment. The other one is converting it to another metabolite, metabolite B. So the rates of those reactions, the speed of these reactions, will decide on the amount of A at a certain time within the cell.
this V1 uptake of A increases the level of A, right? If the rate is higher, more and more A will be taken up from outside. On the other hand, V2, this reaction, is depleting A. It is consuming the uh, A in the environment by converting it to another metabolite. So which means that the amount of A at any time will be determined by the difference between V1 and V2. V1 increases the level of A, V2 decreases the level of A, so this is the differential mass balance around A. And this part, we can call this as the amount of A or no, the, the change in the amount of A over time. Differential means you define a change, right? That's the definition of derivative. So here we write a mass balance around A. This is a differential mass balance. And we want to write an expression that defines how the amount of A over time will change. So the amount of A over time will change based on the rates of V1 and V2. This is what we mean by a differential mass balance around each metabolite. So we write this differential mass balance around each metabolite within the system boundary. We already wrote it for metabolite A. Now we will write it for metabolite B, C, and D. Here you see metabolite B balance. So how the amount of B will change over time. So this is the uh, mathematical representation of this expression. So, amount of B increases with V2, and it decreases with V3 and V4. So, we will write it as plus V2, minus V3, and minus V4. Let's go on. So, this is the change in the concentration of C over time, the change in the amount of C over time, C is produced by reaction V3, it is consumed by reaction V5, so this will be our differential mass balance for metabolite A. Finally, we will write this for metabolite D, it is produced by reaction V4, consumed by reaction V6, so at the end we have we had four in, intracellular metabolites, four metabolites within the system boundary, and we have written four differential mass balance. So if we check our reaction list, we see that we have six unknowns. We don't know the rates of those reactions, and we have four balances around the metabolites inside the system boundary. So what we do here is to write a balance around each metabolite, and this is referred also as dynamic mass balancing. Dynamic means time dependent, as I said. What is the next step? We have written our differential mass balances around intracellular metabolites. So one alternative is to solve those four ordinary differential equations.
this would require rate expressions in the form of V as a function of concentrations. So the left hand side of the equation is in terms of the concentration of metabolites, right? Concentration of A, B, C, D. We can make this list of equations solvable only if we also write those rates in terms of concentrations. Then left hand side will be in terms of concentrations, right hand side will be in terms of concentrations. So you have a list of ordinary differential equations. There are solvers for this. You can solve for this and you can predict the rates over time, how the rates change over time and how the concentrations change over time. Kinetic expression based modeling, that category that I have uh, I had shortly mentioned. So, uh, how can we express rates as a function of concentration? This is mostly based on the enzyme kinetics. So, mostly in in vitro experiments in the lab, the enzymes are studied and how they respond to certain concentration of substrates for that reaction is profiled. And then uh, these kinetic expressions are formed. So this is an example kinetic expression. As you see, rate is as a function of concentration. And these are parameters. This expression is known as Michael Michael Smenten uh, kinetic expression. And it has two parameters. So you need to quantify this Vmax and Km values. You need to know these values for that specific enzyme to incorporate this into this set of ordinary differential equations. If you don't know the values of the kinetic parameters, again, you will not be able to solve the set of ODEs, ordinary differential equations. Kinetic expressions can be much more complex, as you see here. So these are parameters here, as you see. And such kinetic expressions, so rates as a function of concentration, is only available for a very limited number of reactions. So if you want to consider all central carbon metabolism reactions, also biosynthesis reactions, etc., in your model, then for many reactions, you will not have this kinetic expression. So this kinetic rate expression-based modeling is applied only for uh, systems with around 10, 15, 20, maybe 30 reactions, provided that you know the concentration-based kinetic expressions of those reactions. So it is limited in that sense. Yes, it gives you more information. You can predict how concentrations change over time, for example, a very valuable information. Uh, which you cannot predict by using steady-state modeling. But, as I said, it is limited because such rate expressions or the values of those parameters are not known for many of the reactions in the cell. So, we won't talk about how this dynamic uh, kinetic expression-based modeling is performed. The focus in our course is steady-state modeling, so mass balance-based steady-state modeling of metabolism. How is it possible while we are having those differential equations here, ordinary differential equations here? In this Set state modeling, an assumption is made that the system is at steady state or at resting state. 
What does this mean? This means that there is no change in the concentration levels of intracellular metabolites, the metabolites within the system boundary, over time. So, this defined how the concentration of A changed over time. But if the system is at steady state, which means that if the levels of concentrations within your system, within your cell of interest, uh, is constant over time, if they don't change over time, this means that this expression is equal to zero, right? A doesn't change over time. The level of the concentration of A doesn't change over time, which means the change in the level of A over time is zero. It doesn't change. So by assuming steady state, if your system is at steady state, all the left-hand sides of ordinary differential equations that you wrote will be zero. Which means that we will have linear set of equations. And in this case, we have four equations. So each equation is coming from a balance around these four uh, intracellular metabolites, and we have six unknowns. So this is a set of linear equations, and it can be easily solved. You don't need the kinetic expressions for the rates for this, so you can solve this to predict the rates of the reactions. Let me repeat this basic assumption behind steady state modeling. We assume that at steady state, metabolites within the system boundary will have equal rates of production and consumption, so their level will not change. Let's think of G6P. It is produced by this reaction and it is consumed by those two reactions. At steady state, we assume that the rate of production of G6P is equal to the rate of consumption of G6P by, by those two reactions. So if the production and consumption of uh, a metabolite, the rates, if they are equal, this means that the level of G6P will not change over time, right? All the produced G6P is converted to other things, all of them, because the consumption rate and the production rate is equal. So this means that the intracellular metabolites, those metabolites, do not accumulate over time. Over time, their level will not change. They will not accumulate or they will not be depleted. 